Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a comparison of the Air Travel Pack 3 and the Alpaca Elements Travel Backpack, which are two of my favorite one bag travel options. I've really enjoyed using both of these on a number of trips, and as I noted in the comparison that I did for the Air City Pack and the Alpaca Elements Pro recently, which are two just great more daily focus tech bags, I feel like there's a lot of similarities between the two brands. They both offer really high quality bags that you know have great organizational layouts, sleek looks, and so it might feel a little bit tricky to decide which of these might be best for you depending on your needs, and that's what I'm hoping to cover in this video. I'm gonna talk through some of the similarities and differences that you might wanna keep in mind, so hopefully the video is helpful. Before jumping in, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny, and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the overall aesthetics, to me, Air and Alpaca's bags don't necessarily look the same, but they have a pretty similar vibe in that they're modern, they're techy looking, they're pretty sleek. They seem to be geared towards a more urban setting, great for traveling, not necessarily meant to be taken into the outdoors, but still just really versatile bags that have a nice modern look. And to me, Alpaca's bags seem to have a shape that kind of contours down. They're not as boxy as some of Air's bags can be. So, you know, that'll really come down to aesthetic preferences that different people have. I think they both look great. I've really liked using both. They're offered in a couple of different colors and fabrics. Right now with the airbag, I have their traditional 1680D ballistic nylon that just feels really rugged, durable, weather resistant. They also offer this in an X-Pack, which is what I have the Elements Travel Backpack in. This is a VX42 X-Pack, I believe, uh, which is held up really well. Feels like it's gonna offer a little bit more weather resistance. It's also slightly lighter, maybe than the 1680D. Um, so just both very durable, which is helpful for traveling. The X-Pack typically comes paired with the Aqua Guarded YKK zippers. They both have YKK zippers, but the uh, Air in this fabric combo has the reverse coil YKK, and then they have a little bit more protection. You have kind of an Aqua Guard on the laptop area, so that's good that they have it there, whereas pretty much all the compartments on the Elements Travel Backpack are Aqua Guarded, so both, again, very durable. Lots of functionality on these. As sleek as the bags are, they're not the most minimal bags, uh, so, you know, they have, both have external water bottle pockets, which is great to see. Alpaca has more of the traditional style compartment here, so you have some elasticity, good amount of space, and it just kind of blends into the side of the bag when it's not in use. Air has this water bottle pocket that has the ability to zip open and close, depending on when you're using it. I've always liked this system, but I've heard a lot of people that have issues with it, particularly with a taller water bottle. I have noticed that they can tend to slide out a little bit, so it might depend on what you're carrying. You may slightly prefer Alpaca's implementation if you know, you're using something a little taller. They also have compression straps. Alpaca has kind of the fixed compression strap here. It's got a G-hook so you can adjust it. You can pair it with a, a tripod if you're putting something taller in the water bottle pocket. Whereas Air has the magnetic compression straps, two on each side. So you have a little bit more uh, maybe flexibility there on Air side. You can clip on additional accessories to the outside. You can compress the bag down if you, uh, you know, don't have it as packed out. I also like that they have these quick release buckles that work very well. So nice flexibility there, whereas Alpaca only has one compression strap on the side. With that being said, they do have compression straps on the bottom, which the Air backpack does not have. So here you have maybe a little bit of additional flexibility if you wanna carry your tripod here, if you wanna use this for a yoga mat, a jacket. I also like that these straps can be fully removed if you don't wanna use them. And they have these nice buckles, which are quick release, very just flexible. So big fan of having that and the ability to remove them if you don't want to use them and then they both have you know really nice handles on the side very similar seat belt like fabric here then air has a handle at the bottom which you don't have with the alpaca bag and then they both have really nice top handles air has a little bit of an edge there just thicker a beefier strap but they're both you know really comfortable they felt great overall so nice amount of functionality just along the exterior as far as 
the zipper pulls, got the Hypalon implementation on Alpaca's end, and then you have Airs. Uh, I've heard of what Chase Reeves calls them the dreadlock zipper pulls, or somebody calls them that. That always made me laugh a little bit. But I've, I've always enjoyed, you know, these zippers. They're very easy to grab. If you have all the pockets close together, of course, it can start to get a little bit confusing as to which is which. And then on air, this exterior, you have a D-ring here near the water bottle pocket. Maybe a good place to put a luggage tag or to clip on something with a carabiner, like a hand sanitizer. Particularly helpful while traveling. On the branding side, they're both fairly subtle. Airs may be a little bit more prominent here, but down near the bottom, you have a small logo. Alpaca has the blacked out logo that just kind of blends in here, which is really nice. And then taking a look at the capacity, both of these are listed at 35 liters. But, you know, I have to say that Airs feels quite a bit just bulkier than Alpacas. It feels a little bit wider, a little bit bigger. They both can hold an impressive amount, and I'll show you in the loadouts in the main compartment later, but I do really like the maybe slightly smaller feeling of the Elements backpack, it, you know, particularly if you're looking for something that you could potentially get away with using as more of a daily bag or something that could uh, go under more seats on an airline. I think this is still a little bit large to be used as a personal item, but you're more likely to get away with it than the travel pack Three, one thing to call out about the travel pack, however, is that it is offered in a small version, which comes in at about 28 liters. So it would be a little bit smaller than both of these, but it's still a really capable bag. I've talked about that in a lot of different videos. It's one of my favorite larger personal items to use. Uh, so very cool that Air offers that in the two sizes. So if you're looking for something that's gonna give you maybe just a little bit more space, the Travel Pack 3 will have a slight edge, even though they're both listed at that 35 liter capacity. Taking a look at the harness system, so far both bags have been really comfortable to wear. Air's harnesses have been some of my favorite for many years now. I really love the type of padding that they include on their shoulder straps, just really kind of chunky, soft. You have a nice amount of breathability on the inside. Alpaca has a sort of ridged system here that is you know, pretty unique. I've found it to be pretty comfortable, but I've heard a couple of comments from people that aren't as crazy about the system. To me, even though it has, you know, kind of the elevated padding here, uh, I do prefer just the breathability offered by the air mesh on air straps. Uh, but both of them have worked well. I just, I just feel like airs are a little bit more robust. And then both of them have the load lifters to allow you to just pull that weight closer to you and kind of tweak how the bag sits on your shoulders. They include a nice sternum strap that's adjustable. On air side, you have a couple of extra attachment points which I don't really use that much anyway. And then with both of these, you have the ability to add a waist belt, which uh, is sold separately on both bags, I believe. And so they, there's these attachment points along the bottom. At 35 liters, you start to get into a range where some people may want to have that. So it's good that you have the ability to use it. I typically don't with either of these bags. I do have a couple of waist belts that are compatible, but I just don't tend to use them. And then, as far as the back panels, you know, very similar here. Both have been really comfortable. They have plenty of padding, well distributed all throughout. They both have kind of an air mesh breathable fabric on the back paneling. Good amount of elevation and air channels to provide plenty of ventilation while you're walking around. So, you know, I don't really have a huge preference between these. Both of them have been great. Both also include a luggage pass through so that you can rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. And I like that they both have the handles on the side so that makes it easy to place onto the luggage pass-through. Forgot to call out earlier, Air actually has handles on both sides, so slight advantage there. Uh, but you know, just really great as far as the harness system. Both of them have been comfortable, even under a heavier load for a longer period of time. And then jumping into the organizational options, both of these offer a nice variety of pockets all throughout. I would say Alpaca's layout is a little bit simpler than Air's, but still just plenty of ways to make sure that it's easy to find your stuff while you're on the go. Starting off with the quick access pockets, both of them have a quick access pocket along the front. Alpaca's is a little bit of a different implementation. I've never been as crazy about it. They have this lip that comes over the zipper, which I guess does provide some additional protection. And then the compartment itself is a little smaller. It's gonna be great for maybe some chargers, cables, snacks that you're grabbing while you're on the go. And then on air side, you have a lot more space in this compartment. 
has a pretty good amount of volume. With both of these, as you start to fill out the rest of the compartments in the bag, it can get a little bit tight, but I like the extra flexibility that this pocket provides. In the air compartment, you also have a little lanyard with a carabiner that's gonna be a good spot for your keys. So, you know, just nice, simple compartments there. Alpaca does not have a top quick access pocket on the travel bag. They do have some of them in their daily bags. Air, of course, always has this really excellent top quick access area with the soft lining on the inside. I use these pockets all the time, so great to see that included there. And then along the sides, they both have an additional zippered area. Alpaca has this one that opens a little bit wider. It's got some extra space, which is nice. You have a zipper compartment on the actual lid that opens up, a couple of slip pockets. So I really like the versatility and the space that's provided here. Whereas on Air's side, you have it right next to one of the side handles, just kind of a hidden smaller compartment here where I might keep a charger or my AirPod, something that I'm grabbing regularly. So not as large or it doesn't offer the same amount of organization, but still really useful compartment, especially with some of the other options that Air has throughout the bag. Up next, both have a larger kind of admin style compartment with a lockable zipper. So you'll start to see that, which is nice, just given the travel focused nature of these bags. And again, Airs here is gonna be just a little bit bigger. I like that both of these compartments go to the bottom of the bag. So you can take advantage of the height here, which is really useful if you wanna place pouches, uh, you know, your liquids, jacket, you know, some of those larger items that you grab a lot while you're traveling, but that you don't want to store in kind of the main area. And so uh, these have good organizational layouts on the inside as well. On Alpaca's end, you have a couple of compartments on the lid, which you don't have on air side. So small zipper pocket here, you have a more hidden one on the back. It's got an air tag pocket. And then you have some rows of webbing that pair with Alpaca's ecosystem of accessories that you can clip on, or if you wanna use it for other sort of webbing compatible accessories. And then on the back side, you have a couple of slip pockets, an area for a pen, stylus, and then one more zippered area here. One interesting thing about a lot of the bags that come in X-Pack is the kind of orange liner on the inside. So it gives you a nice amount of contrast. On air side, if you get it in X-Pack, you'll have, I believe, an orange liner as well with the ballistic nylon. You have this gray, which is still, you know, gonna provide a good amount of visibility. I actually prefer the gray inner liner versus the orange one, which has become really popular these days. And then on air side, all the organization is on the back. You have some really large, useful slip pockets here. I like the amount of elasticity that they have. So it'll just kind of mold around any bulkier chargers. I put my GoPro in there, a lot of different accessories. And then up along the top, a couple more elastic slip pockets, place for your pen, a stylus. Then you have a zippered compartment that's just gonna prevent you from losing anything smaller into the bottom areas of the bag. And then a tall slip pocket, good spot for a folder, magazine. Um, sometimes I'll place my tablet or Kindle in there. So nice amount of flexibility. Again, if you need a little bit more space, Air has a slight advantage there, but Alpaca does also have the ecosystem that has been kind of created to work around some of the ways that this is laid out. Moving into the laptop compartments, both of these do a great job of offering a nice amount of protection. They have lockable zippers. Again, the aqua guarded protection from the elements. It's a top loading dedicated compartment on both of these. I like that it's not that lay flat compartment. I, you know, this just allows you to get whatever you need quickly, which works very nicely. And they both have a padded sleeve that is suspended off the bottom of the ground. Alpaca has a really nice soft lining on both sides of the compartment. Plenty of space here for a 15 or 16 inch laptop. You also have a dedicated tablet sleeve here that's gonna offer a nice amount of space. It's also pretty well padded and it has that soft liner. So I like that it offers protection to both of your devices, which is not always the case. On air side, similar sort of layout as far as the soft lining on the back. The compartment is pulled up off the bottom of the ground. It offers a nice amount of padding. It doesn't have the fleece lining on both sides, so a little bit of an edge there to alpaca, for me at least. And then there isn't actually a dedicated tablet sleeve in the laptop area here. So that's something to keep in mind. You do, however, have this additional zippered compartment at the top, which is super useful as far as, you know, kind of grouping your charger, 
your portable hard drive, your mouse. I like to separate all of my stuff uh, next to the laptop so that it's just kind of all grouped together. So really like having this compartment here, an impressive amount of volume without taking up space from the main area necessarily. And then speaking of the main area, both of these have a good clamshell style opening. So very easy to pack out lots of visibility you know particularly if you like to use packing cubes for your organization so opening that up you can get a sense this is where you can really start to kind of just notice that the travel pack 3 just feels a little bit bigger a little bit wider the, uh, the elements backpack comes up a good amount but in general you know this one just looks a little bit bigger visually both of them, of course, can handle my typical packing cube layout pretty comfortably. Uh, beyond that, on the insides of the compartment, slightly different layouts. So on alpaca side, you have a couple of zippered compartments on the sides for smaller accessories that you don't want getting lost. I don't use these as much. Then you have some more webbing along the back of the alpaca backpack so configuring with additional accessories if you have molly compatible pouches that can probably also work here i typically don't use that all too much i know that part of the intention with the elements backpack was for it to be somewhat camera compatible so alpaca may have some accessories that could pair well with this stuff here but in general i still like the layout none of this stuff gets in the way on the air travel pack a little bit simpler, no webbing, no compression straps. You do have a zipper compartment here on the inside, a small one for anything a little bit more sensitive, some extra cash, documentation. Beyond that, you know, you just have kind of the big open space. One thing with the quick access pocket is, you know, you do have it, but if you fill it up completely, it will take up a little bit of space from the main area. And then on the lid, both bags offer a little bit of organization here. So. Alpacas has kind of the traditional clamshell layout where you have a zippered compartment at the top and at the bottom. These have a nice mesh. You can see what's on the inside. Another good spot for toiletries, tech accessories. And if you don't tend to use these, they stay out of the way. On air side, you do have one mesh zippered compartment at the top. A little bit more volume here. And I like the flexible mesh that's used on this one. It really feels like it's gonna provide a lot of flexibility. And then you have this really tall zippered compartment which was a nice update when this was announced this uh could be a good spot to separate out a jacket or just some other clothes that you want to be able to grab easily without necessarily messing with the rest of the stuff that's in the main area so i've been a fan of this type of compartment and if you don't want to use it again it just stays out of the way so really like the layout of both of these bags i've been able to comfortably travel with each if you need just a little bit more space, again, the air is gonna maybe provide that just due to its larger overall footprint. Um, but in general, with either one of these, you're gonna have a fantastic one bag travel option that's gonna be durable, it's gonna look great, it's gonna keep your tech protected if you're somebody who does some work travel, digital nomading, these are gonna be great options. And you know, it's ultimately just gonna come down to aesthetic preferences, organizational preferences, and then maybe some slight nuances in the weight and the sizing. And so that's it. Those are some of the similarities and differences between the Air Travel Pack 3 and the Alpaca Elements Travel Backpack. Hopefully this video was helpful, and if you have any questions on the bags that I featured in the video or suggestions for similar items that I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I'll make sure to include links in the description below to the dedicated reviews that I've done for each of these bags, as well as to some of the roundup videos that I've done recently where I talk about my favorite travel backpacks. I've got a couple where I talk about some of the personal item bags that I like to use for items that fit under the seat in front of you on a flight, as well as to just other one bag travel options in the same size range as these bags. And I also did one where I cover some of the larger options that might be good to take a look at if you're a little newer to one bag travel or if you just need a little bit more space for your trip. And as always, I wanna thank you for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.